Hello everyone, this recording is going to be very long, so feel free to pause in the middle or listen to it even uh, across a few times. This year, we are all universally faced with a new challenge. For the first time in a very long time, um, Jews around the world do not have the option of doing Lel HaSeder together as a group, and we are each going to be doing it alone at home with our families and not with the communities as some of you may be used to. That challenge is greater for some of us than for others due to the fact that a lot of us have never hosted a Seder before. So I'm going to try to walk you through as a head of a household on how to run a Seder, feel free to share this with other people that also need. I'm going to try to do um, basics, and if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message, and I will do my best to answer. So to get started, the basic thing, the basic goal, that we're trying to get in the Seder, is the mitzvah of v'higadeta lebincha. And you should tell your son. What are you telling your son? You are telling your son the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim, of the exodus from Egypt. Go through the story um, in Sefer Shmot, okay, in the book of Exodus. Go through it. See what you understand, what you don't understand. Feel free to send me a message, and I will do my best to answer. Okay, so let's start diving in a bit into what we're trying to create. The Seder is a fun family or community um, time. It's a big meal. There's a lot of stories, questions. We're going to try to encourage kids to ask questions. It is okay also for us as parents not to always know the answer um, and check it up and get back to to the kid later. So for most of you guys are doing a two-night Seder, which means that you have a chance for the kid to ask a question on the first night and look up the answer in your Chomesh or in um, other books that you may have in your possession and give them an answer in the second night. And if you don't have access to any of that, then afterwards, after Chag is over, after Shabbos is over, then you will, you can check it up and give them an answer, or you can send me and I can try to help you with that. What I do and this is what the advice that I can give, is bef- I create an atmosphere of fun in my sitter. So the first thing that I do is I decorate the room. It's very important that when people come in, whether it's your family or friends that are with you for the seder, when they come in, they feel that this is a special... So, I decorate the walls like the splitting of the Red Sea. I put up, I I will either paint or put up blue uh, sheets. And then I will have kids draw fish and put them on so that they can, the kids can also be very, very involved. Remember, this whole night is about the kids. So passing on the story of Yitziat Mitzrayim, to the next generation. I decorate the table with things from the ten plagues and I build pyramids and I may and I get little frogs that jump or anything like that that you can think of that you have access to to make the atmosphere fun. I also try to do the first part, basically till the meal, I try to do it on the couch as opposed to by the table. If that is something possible, again, you're doing it in a small, intimate environment, you have everything set up in your 
living room as opposed to by your dining room. So we sit, we tell the whole story, we discuss things, we have that. And then when it comes time for the meal, we get up and we go to the table and have the meal and continue from there. As far as setting up the table, you are going to have your matzah. Matzah, <coughs> some of us have a matzah cover, which is a special um, cloth that has three pockets in it for each one of the matzahs. That is important for um, for later on, but if you don't have something like that, you can put a matzah and then a napkin, a matzah, a napkin, and then like have three matzahs and napkins covering them. You also have the Seder plate, which has on it zra, which is a a chicken bone or a meat bone that is burnt. You have a egg and that is hard boiled. You have maror, which we use lettuce. There's charoset, which is made from um, dates and apples that are grind together. There is karpas, which is something that is adama. So most people use either celery or uh, or potatoes, and the last one is chazeret, which is horserash, horseradish. Now we're starting the Seder. We're starting the Seder at night. Um, we have <coughs> everybody at the table. Ashkenazim wear a white cloth uh, cl- cloak that is called a kittel. Um, Sfardim don't. If you have one, you wear it. If you don't, don't worry about it. And everybody should be dressed in their finest Shabbat clothes. And you get up and you explain to the people sitting at the table what we're doing tonight. So usually I will explain what's about to happen. And I say, we're, we're gathered here today for Lela Seder, and I explain the rules of what's going to happen tonight. So I get a bag of candy or chocolate or nuts, and I tell everybody at the table, kids and grown-ups, that every question that will be asked will be rewarded with one of those. The idea is to encourage people to ask. The concept of Lila said there is to tell the story and to answer questions. It's a time that we ask and answer questions. So we we encourage especially kids to ask. And again, don't worry if there's a question that you don't know and you tell your kid, that is a very good question. I do not know. They will still respect you. They will respect you for that, for being a man enough to admit when you don't know something. It's important to tell them, I don't know, that is a good question, I will look it up. However, so that you will come prepared, usually a few days before Pesach, it is customary for the person running the Seder to go over everything And then you're prepared. So, again, I'm making this request. Please, in the next few days, go over the Haggadah. Listen to to this recording. Go over the links that I've sent. And just open a Haggadah. Read through it. In Hebrew, in English, Swahili, whatever language you have that is comfortable for you. Go over it. And anything that you don't know. Take a pencil, write on the side, send me a list of questions, and I will try to answer them as best as I could. Back to the Seder. So I make an introduction, I explain that if they answer question, if they ask questions, they get a candy. If they answer questions, they get a candy. Okay, and that is how you keep them a bit more entertained. Um I would also 
take that time and say that even though right now we're going through a struggle as a nation and as a world with this coronavirus, there's something really nice that we get to spend Leil HaSeder, just the family, and not with everybody. It is special, intimate family time that if we take properly, we can all grow from. I sent in the links also ideas for games. Use them. There's great things. I've used these in many uh, setters before with different groups, more affiliated, less affiliated from around the world. They work. They're fun. They're interactive. And don't be afraid to try new things. Before you start the actual seder, you read with everyone what uh, what is the seder. Seder means order. So there's the order, which is Kadesh, Ulchatz, Karpas, Yachatz, Magid, Rachza, Motzi, Matza, Maro, Korech, Shulchan, Orech, Tzafun, Barech, Halel, Nirza. You come up with your own tune. The classic tune that I grew up with and that I've heard many people growing up with uh, is Kadesh Urechat, Karpas Yachat, Magin Drachza, Motzi Matza, Maror Korech, Shulchan Orech, Tzafun Barech, Halel Nirza. If you have a different tune, sing it. If you want to send it to the group or to other people, your own tunes, great. Let's share more ideas. Let's share tunes. That will be wonderful. The concept of singing it is it gets people more involved. The more involved they are, the more fun this will be. You want to be able to try to keep the crowd for as long as you could without people getting bored. And a lot of this is stuff that is th- that's hard to understand if you're not really, really involved. So try to get them involved. Now we're going to start with Kadesh. Kadesh comes from the word of Kiddush, of ma- like with the blessing that we're going to make on the wine. So a few quick halachot about the wine. First of all, you have to drink it beheseva, which means leaning. We lean towards the left, which is why it's important to bring everybody's pillows to the table. We bring the pillows, we put them, uh, if you're doing it again by the couch, that's even easier, but you put it on your left side so that everybody remembers to lean to the left. If you lean towards the right, there's a fear that you may choke on it, so be careful, lean to the left. If you don't drink leaning, there's a question if you need to drink again. So it's very, very important to remember to lean. Now a question, why are we leaning? We're leaning because that is how kings used to drink, and it's how free people drink. And the whole story of the exodus of leaving Egypt is all about leaving and becoming free people. Free people drink comfortably. And that was what royalty used to drink like and eat. So we adapted that into our Seder. It is better to drink wine. If you do not have wine, drink grape juice. It's fine. As far as for people who can't drink wine, pregnant women, people who don't like wine, I do not drink wine. I do not like the taste. I don't drink anything alcoholic, so I don't drink wine. I drink grape juice. It is okay to drink grape juice. Now, because we're portraying royalty and free men, we do not pour for ourselves. This applies for men, women, and children. You do not pour wine for yourself. If you are a king, you do not pour wine for yourself. Someone pours for you. If you are a queen, you do not pour for yourself. Someone pours for you. So it is important that as the head of the family, as the man, you pour for your wife, and the wife should pour for her husband, and the kids should pour for each other, and the parents should pour for the kids, and the kids should pour for the parents. So for each one of the four cups, try to have someone else in the family pour for you. And you say this in the beginning. You say, because we are free people, 
we don't pour for ourselves because that is what simple people do. And today, tonight, we are royalty. So because we are royalty, each one tonight will pour for someone else. And you just turn to the person on your right or on your left and say, what can I pour for you? And we all pour for each other. And that is a great interactive thing also. The Kiddush over here is a is different than what you may be used to, um, because it all it is for Chag and not for Shabbat, and it also has Shehechianu. The women make a Shehechianu on lighting the candles, the men when they are making Kiddush. Ulchatz. Ulchatz means and will wash. So we are going to the second part, which is, and you wa- we're washing our hands. We are washing our hands for vegetables and not for bread this time, which is not something we usually do. So when we're washing our hands, we wash them, we pour three times on our right hand, three times on our left hand, and we do not make a blessing. You do not say al netilat yadaim because this is not for bread. Different questions can be asked over here of why are we washing our hands and why are we not blessing? Um, and we're going to give like the basic answer over here. And anyone who wants more answers, feel free to ask and I will send. I just, this is already going to be a long recording. So there, the basic answer is, so the children will ask. We're going to be doing a lot of things in the Seder to encourage the kids to ask. The whole year we go through with our work and our life and we don't really stop enough to just say, I'm giving you a night to ask any question in the world, and I will answer it. And that is what the Seder is for. It is a chance for kids to ask everything. And your job is to try to answer the best that you could. And I really believe that there is a extra special connection between you and God in those moments. I've been asked questions that I haven't given much thought to, and suddenly you feel an inspiration and can answer better in Lel HaSeder. It is something, they, they say that the gates of heaven are open, and you're just there to accept and to pass on that knowledge. So, Take advantage of it, answer questions, ask questions, and, you know, feel free also to ask your family questions. Come up with your own. Um, Before I go to Seder, I tend to tell everybody, write down, you know, 10, 15 questions that you want to ask throughout the Seder. And don't be afraid of the Seder running long, okay? You also, a lot of you have two days. (coughs) Feel free to say, you know, write down five questions for today, five questions for tomorrow, you know, or 10 or 20 or 30 questions for today and for tomorrow. Just have them interact and everything gets rewarded. They give, they, they ask a question, reward, give them a, give give them a candy, give them a, a marshmallow, a, a, a nut, whatever it is, something to reward them. Now we move on to karpas, the third part. Karpas is, um, we use a potato, a big potato with salt water. Um, I know people who use celery, and you can really use any, uh, any vegetable that is, uh, any vegetable and dip it in either lemon, uh, lemon water or salty water. Now, you don't want to eat too much of this because then you will need to also make a bracha achona. You'll need to basically bench on it afterwards. And we don't want you to need to bench now. So you take um, one or two small pieces 
and you eat that. And when you're making the blessing of Bore Priya have in mind also the maror that you're going to be eating later, the lettuce that you're going to be eating later, so that you're not blessing again. So Karpas, again, the basic answer that is given of why we're doing Karpas is so the children will ask. And that's going to be a very mainstream answer that we're going to get. Um, the salty water, there's, uh, th- there's an idea that it is for the tears of the Egyptians that, that drowned and that went through the plagues. So we're taking a bit of their sorrow with us. As a rule, we try not to gloat in the failure of our enemies because we remember that they are also God's creations and that God is also sad when his creations uh when his creations die and that we should not we should not be enjoying that. So a bit of of salty water is to remind us. Yachatz, the fourth part. So yachatz means to split. We take the middle matzah, remember we have three matzahs that are on our table, and we take the middle matzah and we break it. Now you don't want to break it into two even parts. You try you break it like in the middle-ish, and then take the smaller part and put it back in the middle. And the bigger part, you wrap it up and it goes to the adults. Okay, which means like you basically put it behind your pillow or whatever. Um, <clears throat> the concept is to hide it. Okay, it comes back for that is the afikomen that we are going to be taking out later on. Um, different customs around the world, either the kids try to steal it from the father throughout the night quietly, and if they manage to steal it and you can't find it because they hid it, well, then they can bargain with you and you give them some prize in the end, or you can hide it. And if they manage to find it, like you do it like a treasure hunt in the end of the, in, towards the end of the meal, when you need to eat the afikomen, afikomen, we'll get to that later, it means dessert, and it's that matzah that we're going to eat. So if you, either you hide it or they hide it, and then the other person needs to find it, and you make some deal with them of, right, like, let's say you can't find it, or you pretend you can't find it, and then you say, if you give it back, I'll get you a soccer ball, or I'll get you a book, or whatever it is, or I'll take you on a trip, or you just find something to negotiate with them. Um, it the, the idea is it's pretty late in the Seder when that happens, and that also keeps the kids very, very interactive, and there's a lot of ideas of why we hide it or why they hide it from us, and we can discuss that in length a different time. Okay, Magid. Magid is the most important part of the Seder. It is the story. Okay, Magid means to tell or he told. And this is the important part of the of the Haggadah. There's a lot over here that is stories and it's uh and it's not always so easy to understand. So what we do is you if you have a Haggadah Haggad in English and you have enough for everyone, we try to have every person read a part. And that way they're not just sitting there while you're reading through it. We don't you know, they don't want to just sit there while you read through it. They want to be a part of it. Remember this. Remember that your kids want to be a part of it, okay? And that if you give them the chance to be a part of it, it is an experience that they have, okay? That they don't end up feeling like they were passive. That's a very, very, very important thing. Your boys and your girls need to feel that they have a connection to their Jewish roots. You want them to be rooted with their Jewish roots, they need to feel active. So you give them something to read. If they don't want to read, don't push. But give them something to read. Say, 
Who wants to read the first part? Who wants to read this part? Who wants to read what Rabbi Tarfon says? Who wants to read what the wise son says or what the wicked son says? And you just have them read so that they feel interactive. So the first part is Ha-Lachma Anya. This is the poor man's bread. You pick, uh, you remove the the cover from the matzah, and you pick it, and, and you pick it up. You pick up the seder plate also, <clears throat> and you say, "This bread is the poor man's bread." <laughs> that our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Kol dichvin yete viyochal, anyone who's hungry should come and eat. Kol hatzin detzarich yete viyifsoch, anyone who needs should come and sit down with us in our in our meal. Hashtahacha, this year we're here. Leshana haba be'ara di Israel. Next year we should be in the land of Israel. Hashta avde. This year we are slaves. Leshana haba bnei chorin. Next year we will be free. Or in other words, right now we are in exile, and next year Mashiach, the Messiah, will come, and the exile will be over. We pour at this point the second cup of wine, reminding you everybody pours for someone else, and um. And we do not drink it yet. Then we start Manishtana, the song Manishtana. Um, again, different tunes. It is usually the youngest kid in the family sings, but encourage every kid to sing. We always say any kid who sings will get you know, five candies. It's a big thing, but they need to do it. Like, we do it. Each kid needs to sing it by heart. Or each kid need you know, so you can do it. Each kid can sing it in English. And anyone who can also say it in Hebrew will get an extra three candies. Right? Like, you try to just encourage them, challenge them, give them something that they can feel a part of accomplish. You cheer them on every single question. If they get it, you know, if they get it right, um, you, you cheer them on when they're done. You praise them. That's a very big part of this so that they are encouraged. The question of Manishtana is it's four different questions. Okay? It's four questions that is just to get the ball rolling. We want them to start asking questions. So remember, encourage them throughout the whole thing. Ask questions. Ask, you know, if you have older kids, ask philosophical questions. Have intellectual debates. It doesn't need to be just very two-dimensional. Give it some depth. We leave the matzahs uncovered for the rest of Magid. Now, a big part of Magid is the story in the rabbi's words as opposed to just um, in your own words. If you have a if you have a hard time reading through all of it or you don't have a Haggadah that um you know it's all in Hebrew and you're having a hard time then tell the story yourself in your own words okay that is the mitzvah tell the story in your own words of of Yitziat Mitzrayim okay talk about the 10 plagues ask the kids who knows what the ten plagues are, right? Tell them about why we went down to Egypt in the first place. We went down there because Yo because the brothers sell Yosef into slavery, so that he can go and basically prepare the land for them. And then there's a famine, and they come down, and Yosef takes care of them, and then they stay there because of the famine. And they become very embedded in the society over there. And then Paro tricks them, and they start working at, for, as slaves for Paro. And talk about how difficult it is, and what they go through as slaves. And the torture 
okay the torture that they're going through and the that the fact that they were that the egyptians would drown the boy babies so that moshe would never be born talk about moshe's story about you know every everything that he goes through then talk about when you know moshe's interaction with paro moshe's inter god's interaction with moshe the plagues each one of them what does it mean? Why Why did God choose, you know, to start with blood and then frogs? Why does he end with killing every firstborn? You know, it, Paro is, is is a king. He is a firstborn. Why doesn't Paro die in the plague of the firstborns? There's a ton to discuss, okay? And you can spend days discussing all of these things. So pick the things that interest you. Pick the things that you think will interest your family and focus on them. Again, because this is going to be long, I'm not going to go through all of Magid. I'm just going to say the parts that you're going to read. So there's Avadima Inu, which is We Were Slaves for Paro. Um, and you continue from there to Ma'aseh Rabbi Eliezer Rabbi Yoshua which are telling which is telling us the story of all of the biggest rabbis of the generation sitting and they're telling each other the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim. And the question over there is they clearly each of them know the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim. Why do they need to sit it down? And that is for the kids that will say, I know the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim. Why do we need to sit down and talk about this, right? So that is exactly the point, is in the last paragraph of the other one, it says, even if we are all smart and we're all wise and we're all big rabbis and we all know the whole Torah, we still have a mitzvah to tell the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Then the Torah go, the Haggadah goes and talks about the four sons. One wise, one wicked, one simple, and one that does not know how to ask. This is a great part for discussion about who are the four sons. What do they represent? Are they, are they all four different sons? Or are they all one son and sometimes you're smart and sometimes you're wicked, sometimes you're simple? What, why is it simple and not stupid, right? There's a lot to discuss over here. Um, usually it is, you know, you give one kid to read the, the wise, one kid to read the simple, and one kid to read the one who does not know how to ask. And I try to read the wicked one so that I'm not calling out anyone at the table and saying, why don't you read the what the wicked son has to say? Um, it saves it saves embarrassment. We move on to the story of why we go down to Egypt. It starts from Yechol Merosh Chodesh. It's a bit long, and it gets to Vachrechen Yitzum Berechush Gadol. Read that if you you know if you have a hard time, you can skip through it a bit. We cover the. Matzah, and we pick up our glasses and our cups of wine, and we say Vihi Shamda. Now, there's again a lot of song tunes for this. Find one on YouTube, sing it. Um, I'm sure that some of your communities already have tunes. We sing Vihi Shamda, Vihi Shamda, Lavotenu Velano, Vihi Shamda. And there's a lot of other tunes that you can use. Just pick a tune. Again, you want to keep this as interactive and as fun as you want, as you could. And don't be surprised if your kids don't know these tunes or if you don't know tunes. 
it's something that you can learn if you have a musical kid in the family. Say, why don't you put a tune together to this sentence and see what you come up with. And please share if any of you have really nice tunes. We put down the cup of wine and we expose the matzahs again. Now, most of the Haggadahs actually say all of these instructions. I'm just walking you through them so that you could go through it uh, by yourself. Now, again, um, my advice is my Haggadah has a ton of writing in it. I have things I write down in them in pencil and pen, whatever. So while you're listening to the recording, you can have your Haggadah out and just keep on writing. You know, if it doesn't say in your Haggadah, so write down. Over here, we put down the cup and we oh, and we show and we expose the matzahs again, and then we continue reading. Now, this part is probably the longest part that there isn't a ton of uh, discussion going on, and there aren't a lot of songs. So feel free to break it up however you want. Um, this is Tseul Mad till what it says, Kmosh Neemal Venatati Muftim Bashamayim Uva Abetz. This goes literally through the whole story from when Yaakov and his children go down to Mitzrayim um, and the slavery and the pain and, and, uh, and crying to God and God coming and taking us out of Egypt. But right before that, right before the plagues. And then we get to Dam the Esh Vitimrot Ashan. Dam, blood, Esh, fire, Timrot Ashan, a gust of smoke. It's a description of the type of punishments that God punished the Egyptians. In each one of these, we take a bit of wine and we pour it out into a bowl. That bowl, later on, we throw out the wine. You don't drink that wine. Um, this is, again, we're showing our pain for the Egyptians that also suffered. So when we say dam, we take a bit of wine and pour. You don't want to pour too much out because you don't want to waste wine. So you take a bit, pour out. Esh, pour out. Timurat Hashan, pour out a bit. That's three times. Then we say, Elo Eser HaMakot. These are the ten plagues that God brought on the Egyptians. And these are them. And for each one of them, again, we pour out a bit of wine. You can either pour physically by just tilting the cup a bit, or you put your pinky. Okay, that's what my family does. Um, my wife's family takes and pours with the glass. So we put our pinky in onto the top of the cup and just drip it out like whip a bit of wine out from the cup into a, a plate and you say dam one it's for there too right like each time you're dipping you're pouring out a bit of wine kinim arov devil shrin and you go through all of them and while you're doing this you can just you know like you finish and then you can Discuss it with the kids. What are they? Before you do the ten plagues, you can ask, who knows the ten plagues, right? And just see which one of your kids can name all ten of them. Um, you know, like things that have to do with memory uh, tend to excite a lot of kids. And then the last three that we're going to pour out for, um, in Rabiuda says is that he used to give Simanim, he used to make signs to remember the ten makot, and that's Datsach Adash Bachav. It's the initials of the first three, the middle three, and the last four. So for when we say we say Datsach, we pour out a bit. Adash, we pour out a bit, Bachav, we pour out a bit. Now we need to have a full glass of wine for the mitzvah of drinking for cups of wine so we pour we now that we poured out all the wine we take from the bottle and we re-pour again everybody pours for someone else again another part that doesn't have a ton to discuss it's more of a um how much were each maca worth in different um kabbalistic uh, aspects so it's from Rabbi Yossi Aglili 
Till says, "Ve'al hayam laku chamishim umatayim makot." Though that is how the, the, that that part. If again, if you have a hard time reading through all it, or you see your lives in the crowd, um, just scroll through it fast or skip it completely. Kama ma'alot tovot lamakom aleinu. This has it's a wonderful song. Um, there's the the Lemba tribe in Zimbabwe has a beautiful tune for this that I will try to uh, to send out to everyone. And if you would like the plain Ashkenazi tune, it's Ilo Ilo Hotsiano Hotsiano Mimitzaim Vehelo Asabahim Shfatim Dayeno Ilo Asabahim Shfatim Velo Asabeloem Dayeno Ilo Asabeloem Velo Haranget Behorehem Dayeno Dai dai eno, dai dai eno, dai dai eno, dai eno, dai eno, and this goes through the whole song. So that is the tune that I'm used to, but I really like the one from the Lemba tribe in Zimbabwe. So I will try to have that sent as well um, with this. Um, we continue al achat kama vekama till lechaper al kol avonoteinu. And here is the real important part from a halachic point of the Seder. Um, Rabban Gamliel used to say, anyone who did not say these three things on Pesach is not Yotzei Yodei Chova, which means you were you did not do the Seder. What are these three things? Pesach, Matzah, Umarol. Pesach, we are going to point at the bone um, that is on the Seder plate and do not pick up the Seder plate because we it is only a remembrance for the Karban Pesach and not, um, and not the actual Karban. So we say Pesach, and then we read the little paragraph afterwards that explains what the Pesach is. Matzah. The Matzah, we pick up the matzah and everybody looks at it so that you know what we're saying so we say matzah why are we eating matzah and then we explain over here and it goes through that in the next paragraph and maror we pick up the lettuce leaves and we say maror for what why are we eating this and we explain why we eat it in the next paragraph after saying that part you you completed the mitzvah the minimal mitzvah of the Seder. Okay, so it's very, very, very important to go through that. We continue. The Chol Dor in every generation, every person needs to see himself as if he left Egypt. And we read that part. We pick up our glass before we say, Lefichach. Okay, Lefichach Anu Chayvim Laudot. We pick up the, our glass and we cover the matzahs. And... Um, we end with Vinomar Lefanav Shira Chadasha Hallelujah in the end of that paragraph. We put down the cup and we start um, Hallel, like from Rosh Chodesh and holidays. We say Hallelujah um, and we we read through that or we sing through it if you have a nice tune. We sing Betzet Yisrael Mi Mitzrayim um, and we get to Really nice tunes for this. Worthwhile looking up on YouTube for um, Betzet Israel. Uh, it's a it's a beautiful song. Now for the second cup, we pick it up now and we say, Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech Haolam, and we make this whole bracha about Gaal Israel about how you. T- took us out of Egypt, and we make the bracha on Bore Pri Hagafen. And I'm reminding you again, you need to lean to the left. If you don't lean to the left, there is a question if you need to drink the second cup again. Rachza, the next part, you go and you wash your hands for eating matzah. You get up from the table, go wash your hands. And when you're going to wash your hands this time, you do make a bracha. 
ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר קידישנו במצוותיו וציוונו על נטילת ידיים. And it's very important that you say the bracha this time so that, right, I know that sometimes not everybody remember, knows all the, the brachot, but it's important that your kids realize that there was a difference between the first washing and the second washing that we're doing now for eating matzah. We take the matzah now, everybody's sitting back down, we take the matzah and we hold up all three matzahs. We have in mind that what we're going to be using now is the top matzah and we make a bracha, hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Now the second bracha that comes here, this is motzi matzah, it's two blessings. We take out the, the bottom matzah and we say, Baruch ata Hashem elokeinu melech haolam asher kedishanu mitzvata v'tzivanu al achilat matzah. I'm sorry, that was my bad. We take out the bottom matzah so that you are not making a blessing on that right now. You are, you, we needed it for the first one so that you have two full matzahs. You take a piece from the top matzah now and a piece from the middle matzah, the one that we broke beforehand, and you eat them together while leaning to the left. Now, remember, you have a whole family there. So how do you do it? You take it, you break it up. If you don't have enough in that matzah so that everybody has two big bites, okay? It ends up coming out to be like a factory matzah is about one kazite. So you need to eat a full one of that to be outside. So we take this matzah and we, div- we, we take a piece and I break off a piece from the top one and a piece from the middle one. And I put that on the side. Let's say we have eight people at the table. So I make eight different pieces like that. And then in addition to that, I will also take other matzahs from the middle of the table. Okay, you have a box of matzahs that you bought from the community or that you made. And you take them and break off half a matzah or three quarters of a matzah, depending on the size of them. And you put them together and hand that out to each person. Because you made the blessing, you actually have to be the first person to take a first bite. And everybody else needs to finish. You finish no talking in that time and finish eating the matzah completely. Yemenite matzahs and Sephardi matzahs, you need to eat a lot less because they are thicker and the um, kazite is considered bigger. Marar. So marar, we take a lettuce leaf. A big lettuce leaf is a kazite. That is the minimum that you're supposed to eat. And you take it, you can dip it in the haraset if you like haraset. If you don't like the haraset, don't. There is no need. Dip it in the haraset and then shake it off so there's not too much haraset because the concept over here is we want the bitterness. We do not want you to have it as sweet. Maror means bitter. We want the bit the bitterness. And it's to remember, okay, like we beforehand we were talking about the maror and why we have mar. So mar is to remember how bitter it was for our forefathers in Egypt and how much our ancestors suffered there. And you can't be suffering if you're eating something very sweet. Maror we do not eat leaning down. Okay? You eat this sitting up this is not to be enjoyed this is just to remember how bitter it is so you're not trying to remember to to be kings and free men you just eat it and finish after you finish that we take from the bottom matzah okay and we take a you take from the bottom matzah break off a piece for everybody take from the regular matzahs whatever's left and hand that out as well Take another lettuce leaf and make a sandwich out of them. Two ma- like you take matzah, put it on top, like imagine a, a lettuce sandwich that instead of bread you're using matzah. You can put as you can put haroset on. Uh, it makes it sweeter, and you eat that. A you eat that leaning to the left and say this is zecher. Mikdash Kihilel. This is how Hillel did when the, the when the Mikdash was built. He would take Pesach, 
which was meat, okay, the Karban Pesach, matzah, and maror, and put them together, and he would eat them together, because there is a Pasuk that says, al matzat umerorim yochelu, that the Karban Pesach will be eaten with matzah and maror. And now Shulchan Orech, Shulchan Orech is the meal, should be a big feast, where, uh, you know, there, it should be a good meal, uh, with with chicken or meat, whatever you have in your area, um, and soups and whatever you could have, so that you can sit down and have a festive holiday. Um, this in this part, you also do eat the egg um, from the seder plate. The egg is zecher for the carbon of Chagiga. It was the carbon that was brought on the holidays. So we add in, you say, this is in remembrance of the Karban Chagiga. And that's important that your kids also see you do that. And when they say, what is a Karban Chagiga? You say, in the time of the temple, there used to be different sacrifices. And on Pesach, you'd bring an extra sacrifice that was called Chagiga. Chagiga means celebration, that we are celebrating our freedom but today we do not have the temple and we do we are not yet the whole nation back in Israel and because of that we don't we we, we are eating this in memory of the uh, of the carbon um at this point you are allowed to drink as much wine as you want during the meal try not to get drunk the concept over here is not like Purim. We're not trying to get drunk, but it's a meal. It's festive. Eat, drink, enjoy. Once you are done with the meal, let the meal go as long as you want. Just remember, you still have a big part of the Haggadah left, and you don't want to miss it. Um, usually, I put like my Haggadah on the side, and I say, right now, we're going to eat. Enjoy. Okay? Let's play a game while we're eating. You know, you can make car a card game of questions and missions and, you know, the, with whatever comes to mind and just have fun with it. Ask the ask people to tell their stories, right? Sometimes you'll have someone at the table that has a very interesting Pesach story of um, their first Pesach that they remember. Last year, we did it with my wife's grandparent grandfather and we asked him to tell us about you know the most interesting pesach he remembers and he told stories from about 80 90 years ago and there is very 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 cool things about that and you have little kids at the table who just get to sit there and enjoy it and realize what worlds apart they're living from their grandparents, and yet they're still doing the same rituals. And that's something that very much connects everybody. Um, have the kids come up with games, okay? Again, um, if you have kids or teenagers that are that are in that mindset, use that. Have them make decorations beforehand and use that for fun. Um, I, I, I've seen this in a lot of stores. I don't know uh, if you can get them, but there are these little frogs that jump that like you can make them jump. They're made out of plastic or you can make them out of, uh, paper, like origami type of thing. And you have them at the table and have the kids, you know, make different games with them and have that as, you know, for the plague of, of frogs, have the kids try to see if they, how many, how many they can get into the bowl by jumping them, right? Just come up with as many of these ideas as you could and see which ones are practical and which ones are not. And we are up to Safun. In Safun, we eat the Afikomen. The Afikomen was the piece of matzah that we hid in the beginning of the meal. And now this piece of matzah is, afikomen means dessert in Aramaic. And we want to try to eat it before midnight. Um, that is what a lot of people try. If you see that your Seder is running late, I would not rush it. I have had afikomen at 3, 4 in the morning and have enjoyed it. 
it's totally, totally fine. Some people try more to aim for midnight, and some people try not to. Um, a lot of people are going to finish at 9, 10 o'clock just because the kids are tired, and some of you are going to finish at 2 o'clock in the morning. So have fun with it. Don't, you know, don't, don't feel rushed. Now, as we said beforehand, either you hid Dafi Komen or the kids hid Dafi Komen or you gave your wife to hide Dafi Komen while, you know, you tell you tell the kids, right now, Ima's going to go and hide Dafi Komen somewhere in the house. Later on, in Safun, is when all the kids are, they go around the house and they try to find it. And the kid who finds it gets to pick the prize. Um, there were years that my parents gave us physical prizes, um, whether it was toys or, um, or books, um, Jewish or secular, depending on what we asked for. Sometimes they let us negotiate and sometimes they have bought something originally, um, and said, you, you know, if you give me the Afikomen back, I will give you this. And that way they like, that was like the negotiating. Um, we we grew up that we did a lot of hikes around the country so my father always said like who you know if if you give me back that fikomen we will do uh an overnight trip the family will go camping right or we'll do something just try to think of something that is important for your family and you can get it done with that bargaining and it's a lot of fun and definitely definitely worth it you take from the Afikomen and from another matzah, you need, again, you need a kazait, you need almost a full matzah. You are not allowed to eat anything after this. It is the last thing that you're eating. Um, you're not really supposed to be drinking either, but we drink the other uh, two cups of wine after this. And you eat it, again, beheseva, leaning to the left, and you say, Zecher lekorban Pesach hanechal al hasova, in memory of the korban of Pesach that was eaten while you were full. We pour the third cup of wine that we will drink at the end of benching. Sing benching, say benching, whatever you're used to. If your kids uh, or you don't know Birkat Amazon very well, it is worth it to try to say it together. Um, as a general rule, you finish benching, you drink the third uh, cup of wine, leaning to the left. You finish drinking the th third cup, you pour the fourth cup. And we also fill up a cup in the middle of the table, that is the cup for Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the, prof the prophet. Um, it is a, usually we try to make it a bit of a bigger cup, and you put it in the middle of the table. At that point, you get up from the table and go to your front door and open the door for Eliyahu Navi so that he could come in. Okay? It is a gesture. And we open the door and say, the prayer is for God to take his anger out on the enemies of Israel, the enemies of the Jews on all the anti-Semites that want to do us harm and that are making this world a worse place. Hallel! We are singing praises. There's a lot of singing that you can do over here. Um, again, whatever tunes you know, whatever tunes you don't know, uh, you can always find on YouTube. Uh, this is the rest of Hallel and a few other songs. We say Nishmat Kol Chai, and when you finish Nishmat Kol Chai, um, some of you may recognize it from the prayers on Shabbat. We say Nishmat Kol Chai, and we get to 
the last cup and we say the cu- the, the blessing on the fourth cup. You tilt to the left, finish drinking it, and then you make a blessing, um, a bracha or not, a last blessing on the wine. Nirza. Nirza is the last part of the Seder, and this only took us an hour <laughs> and a bit to go over the basics. Um, again, feel free if anyone wants more depth for any single part of the Seder, feel free to send me a message and I will answer as fast as I could. So Nirza is pretty much all songs. Find the songs that you like, uh, that you know the tunes to. Some of them ha- are, are, you know, more like more known. Some of them really don't have a tune. My family comes from Hungary, so most of our songs in Yirza don't actually have a tune, but you can find, uh, just type in in YouTube, Kilo Nae, Kilo Yae, or Adir Hu. These have really nice tunes. And then there's Echad Miyada, or in English, who knows one. Um, great song. And the concept over here, this is not, th- this part, if you're already falling asleep and the kids are falling asleep, it's what it's there for. This part of the Seder is we are trying just to keep them up. So what can we do to keep them up? We can sing. And the songs are fun and whimsical. Okay, Chad uh, Gadia is a song about a person who buys a sheep, uh, a goat, and the cat eats the goat, and the dog eats the uh, bites the cat, and the stick hits the dog, and the... And, and, and the and the fire burns the stick and the water turns out the fire and the and and, and the cow drinks the water and the shochet shechts the cow and the malach the angel of death kills the shochet and God kills the angel of death and it's just a song like you can look for deeper meanings there are deeper meanings for it but it's a song and the concept over here is. The last thing in the Seder that we want the kids to remember is that fun energy that we're sitting and singing and dancing and everybody's getting confused with the words and you're, you know, it's in Aramaic. You're just fumbling to get the words right. So um, enjoy that a lot. Just sit there, get the tunes right. See if your kids have a tune that they know. Um, if some of you, I'm assuming have done community seders before and will have remembered some of these things from, um, from past years. So see what your kids remember. Remember it's, it's something very unique that we have, um, hopefully only this year that really the world just shut down and, as much as I really want to be there with each and every one of you and to be able to do a Seder, I want um, I want you to take advantage of this. And this may not be the most in-depth Seder you ever had or the one with the most song or that, you know, that you knew the most, but it will be the Seder that you won't forget and that your kids will never forget. And they'll never forget it because you're making it something special. It is just your family this year. Have fun with it as much as you could. Um, My final request, and with this we're going to finish, is... Please go over the Seder, uh, the Haggadah, one, two, three, four times, as many times as you could. Write down your questions. See, you know, ask yourself questions and see if you know the answer. Ask me questions. Send them to me through WhatsApp or through email. I will attach my number onto this so that people, so that you can send me questions. Feel free to. Um, I mean that sincerely. I, I always plan a big Seder, and this year I'm not able to, and this is my way of doing that, so please send me questions. It's wonderful. It keeps me thinking, and I enjoy it. And the last part is, please, on Sunday, please go over, um, please, on Sunday, send me how it was. 
I would love to hear from each and every one of you a story, how it was, questions that came up, your your own experience. Uh, last thing with the halachic aspect is you have th- this year it comes out that it is a three day holiday. Okay, there's the two first nights, and then it comes out that it is Shabbat. There is a concept called Eruv Tavshilin, which means that you are not allowed to prepare from one holiday to the next, and you are not allowed to prepare from a holiday to Shabbat. But considering that you need to prepare, um, whether it's cleaning up, setting the table, or it's making food from one holiday to the next, or from one holiday till to Shabbat, there is a concept called Eruv Tavshilin. Um, and you take a you, you take a matzah and a hard boiled egg. That's all you need. And you put it on a plate and just write on that plate, this is a ruv tavshilin, and have that on Shabbat. Okay? And the ruv tavshilin, you just say, this is a ruv tavshilin, so that you can prepare food from one holiday to the next and from that holiday to Shabbat. I hope that this helps you guys a lot. Um, please enjoy, and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.